Hello everyone, it's been a little longer than I would have liked. I got the Rona and I'm still very stuffy. I am starting to feel a little bit better, so I thought we could try out this charcoal that I got for Christmas. These are the 5.6 millimeter uh, assorted leads from Credit Color, the clutch pencil, and I'm also going to be trying out the Spectrafix fixative that you mix yourself. And I have a few sketchbooks I want to try these out in just to get a feel for these leads on different types of paper. This is a multicolored journal. Um, I have the toned tan sketchbook from Strathmore. And then I also have this Canson drawing um, notebook. So let's take a closer look at these leads. The lead that came with the credit color clutch pencil itself is a 2B lead. Um, I like these because you don't need a sharpener. If you want to throw this in your sketch kit, um, you get quite a bit of lead in there, so you're not going to run out during a drawing. And they're thick, so you can um, put down a lot of color. My one issue with this is they aren't labeled. So in this assorted set, I had um, kind of a hard time figuring out which leads were which. As you can see, one of the leads did come in broken. Um, the clutch pencil itself holds on to even a tiny amount of lead, so the fact that one of these is broken isn't a big deal. I was having such a hard time figuring out which leads were which, I actually had to go onto the ZigBlick website and check out what came in the box um, because that's not even listed on the packaging. So that's something that maybe Credit Color could, could change is to write down what is actually included in the assorted set. Um, so here I decided to test out the leads and try to figure it out that way. Um, the graphite ones are labeled, so I knew this was 2B because it is printed 2B on, on the stick. Um, and it was super, super smooth and super um, silky right on the paper. That one I really enjoyed uh, writing with. And then you just click the back of the pencil and it opens up the clutch piece and you can stick in the next lead. Uh, this one is 4B. And it's a little bit darker than the 2B and just as smooth and silky. I'm really, really liking the graphite leads uh, from Credit Color. Um, needing to swap out the leads every time I wanted to change what I was using was a little bit annoying. So I am going to order more clutch pencils so I can have um, different clutches for each type of lead that I'm using. This is the Sanguine Oil Lead. Having an oil binder means that it's not going to smudge as easily in the book like a compressed charcoal or chalk. It's more like a very blendable colored pencil. This particular one is a gorgeous rusty color that would be really nice to use in gestural drawings. So here I am grabbing one of the broken pieces. I have no idea 
what it is again because it isn't labeled. Um, and I started coloring and I thought to myself, oh, this is really dark. This must be the charcoal. So I wrote down charcoal. And it turns out it was not, in fact, charcoal. More on that when I get to the actual charcoal. So now I am testing out the white chalk. Um, some people call it white charcoal, but it's not charcoal because it's white. Um, it's usually some sort of compressed chalk, um, you know, depending on the brand. Um, and this one I actually really liked because it isn't as powdery as many other white chalks that I've used before. Um, it obviously isn't going to show up on the white paper. That's why I tried it over what again I thought was charcoal. So I thought, oh, let me test it out real quick on my toned paper. And it's, uh, it's a great white. It shows up very well. Um, and it doesn't it doesn't just come off when you um, when you brush against it like most chalks and charcoals can do. So um, I actually really like this one. Okay, so now I grab um, another one of the random pieces of lead that I have in here and I tested it out and I thought, oh, this is really dark and it's got a slight brown hue to it. This must be the sepia dark. Um, I know the set comes with a sepia light as well, so I thought, yeah, this 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 must be the sepia dark, right? What else could it be? Well, this is when I grabbed the last stick, and I tried it out, and I realized, ooh, wait a minute, this is really powdery. Um, this this is the actual charcoal, and I thought, oh, that original one that I thought was charcoal was actually the sepia dark. It has um, a, a, a hint of brown to it. So I labeled the correct one charcoal, and then I had to go back and relabel the other two correctly. Not a big deal, but I'm glad I tested them out before I just assumed which leads were which in my drawings. So here they are, all swatched out. I know they're not the neatest swatches, um, but it's a sketchbook and I just wanted to get it done really quickly. The camera isn't picking up the subtleties between the sepia dark and the sepia light. In person, you can tell much more of a difference. Um, and then you can also tell that they're different from the charcoal. The charcoal is a very uh, black color, while the sepias definitely have a warmer brownish hue that you can see once you have it next to the charcoal. So the next step is to mix up the fixative. I have an empty spray bottle, I have the concentrate, I have a funnel, and I have some really cheap vodka. The empty spray bottle has the directions and it says to pour in a quarter of the bottle of concentrate and to top it off with any clear alcohol. And they do specifically state um, not to use like a rubbing alcohol because it can clump. So um, you want to use a grain alcohol or a vodka. Shook it up really well. And what I like about the bottle is it's marked at the quarter lines. So I don't need to guess when I'm pouring it into the spray bottle, um, you know, the correct amount. It's marked for me. This is a casein-based fixative. A casein is basically a paint product that's made from milk protein and alcohol. Um, and it's supposed to be a lot safer than typical fixatives that you would use over chalk and charcoal. This also is supposed to be much better for light colored pastels and chalks. Most fixatives that I've tried when I spray them over a drawing where I've used a white chalk, the chalk just disappears. It goes away and it's like you never used it. And this is supposed to prevent that. So I'm really, really, really hoping it works. Time for the vodka. When I went into the liquor store and purchased the bottle on the lowest shelf at the cheapest price, um, the guy cashing me out kind of looked at me funny. And I said, it's for an art project. I am not drinking this. And he said, well, good, because this is the only thing this alcohol is good for is art projects. I cannot vouch for this quality of alcohol. Um, I will not be trying it. So maybe it's fantastic and I'm really missing out. I don't know. 
Every time I use a funnel, I forget I have to account for the amount of liquid in the actual funnel itself. So I did slightly overfill the bottle. Uh, when I went to go close it, it um, came out of the sides a little bit, but I keep rags in my craft room, so it wasn't a big deal. I just wiped off the sides and uh, we moved on. The amount of spray that comes out of this bottle is quite a bit. Um, I was not expecting that much liquid to come out. I did panic at first. I thought my page was going to be ruined because it buckled so much, but it ended up being fine. Um, you do need a couple of coats. Um, now over here, I tried rubbing it and I hadn't let it dry completely. So I probably should have let it dry completely before I touched it. Um, later on in the video, after I do my drawings, you'll see that it does actually work pretty well. Um, it definitely at one coat makes a big difference. This would have been much smudgier if I hadn't put anything over it at all. I'm going to be drawing these pears that I found on the Unsplash website. It's a royalty-free website where you can find all sorts of great images to draw. I started off using the dark sepia on my toned hand sketchbook from Strathmore. And um, I was experimenting with these makeup brushes to see if they'd be a good tool to blend the, um, the sepia charcoal with, and it worked great. They were really good to use. And I'm just playing with the, the different sticks here. Thought I'd use the white charcoal. Those didn't blend as well with the um, brushes because it's not nearly as powdery as many trucks that I've used. Um, that's not a bad thing. I hate how most chalks don't stick to regular drawing paper. So I'm really enjoying this particular chalk. And then I went in with the charcoal. Now the charcoal isn't quite as dark as I would like my charcoal to be. It's fine. I'd rather use this in clutch format than a charcoal block or vine charcoal from a different company. Um, it's much cleaner on my hands to use the clutch pencil. So I will sacrifice the darkness of the charcoal for the convenience factor of the clutch pencil. Another reason I wasn't quite getting the darks I wanted was because this paper doesn't have much tooth, so it doesn't hold on to very much pigment. Um, that is not the fault of the charcoal itself, that's the fault of the paper. I could have tried using the fixative in between layers of charcoal to hold down the pigment in order to build um, darker layers. The problem with this though is once you spray the fixative on, the pigment is is there and it's going to be difficult, if not impossible, to remove. So you can't really correct for mistakes once you're putting down fixative. So um, because this is just the sketchbook, um, I wasn't too stressed about how dark my ducks were getting. This was just me trying to play with these new products and see how they worked. So um, I didn't really want to waste my time waiting for the fixative to dry in between each layer. I want to reiterate how much I like this white chalk. It was very bright. It erases easily and it it isn't super powdery. I hate the, the powdery chalks that get everywhere. I do want to try Credicolor's Nero Color. They're supposedly a charcoal that has a little bit of an oil uh, binder to it and it's supposed to be less powdery than a traditional charcoal. So because I'm enjoying their other lead so much, I think I'm going to give that a try too. And they come in the same size sticks as these, so they'll fit right into my um, clutch pencil. These makeup brushes did a great job giving me a nice soft blend for the plate underneath these pears. If you don't have spare brushes, either makeup brushes or spare paint brushes to use, you could always use your finger. I ended up using my finger a little bit. You can use a uh, tissue, a tortellan stump. There's all sorts of things you can use to blend out charcoal. You don't have to use makeup brushes. I just had them and I knew I wasn't going to use them for makeup. So it worked out well for me.
After I threw in a few highlights onto the pear, I went in and I put the shadow of the pear. I knew that was going to be one of the darkest values in this drawing, and I wanted to make sure that that was in there so I could better judge the values of the pear um, you know, as I was using my reference photo. Once that shadow was in there, I was better able to judge the rest of the values in the picture. I noticed the background wasn't as dark as I wanted it to be, so I took that dark sepia and I went in and I did another coat and I tried to go in one direction to make it a little less scribbly looking. I wish I had done that for the white table as well. Uh, I just didn't notice at the time um, how scribbly it looked. Um, that's why you should always walk away from your work before you decide it's done and come back and take another look because you're going to notice things later on that you didn't notice while you were sitting there. My takeaway using this charcoal on this paper, I didn't love it. Again, it's not a fault of the charcoal. It's just there's not enough tooth on this paper. It was kind of difficult getting the tones that I wanted. I would definitely use the white chalk and the sanguine oil on this paper. So I sprayed this with the fixative and it looks like the white is disappearing. It isn't. Once it's dry, it comes back. Here is another photo I found on Unsplash. I think they're lemons. They're very odd shaped citrus, whatever they are. I just thought the yellow would be a good option to use in my sketchbook with all my different colored paper. This is very, very thin paper. Um, I believe I'll only be able to use dry media on this paper. It surprisingly took the chalk and the charcoal quite well. Um, even though it seems to have less tooth than the Strathmore paper, the, the charcoal didn't come off as easily as it did on the Strathmore. And the reason why I'm not using the clutch pencil here is I accidentally snapped a little piece of the end off of one of the sticks. It's definitely um, brittle and you definitely want to use it in the clutch pencil. The white chalk also adhered to this paper very well and it blended really well. I was able to get a nice smooth background. One thing I found a little bit frustrating doing these three drawings was to not stress about not having a lot of detail. I find that when I do most of my artwork, I'm very detail focused. I like having a lot of detail. I think it makes things a lot more realistic looking. Um, I struggle with painting very loose. So for me, using a 5.6 millimeter lead in a tiny sketchbook in charcoal was a uh, challenge, let's say, for me. Um, I wanted to really get a lot of detail into these leaves and I was forced to kind of just block in the general values and then not worry about it. Um, I could have gone in with charcoal pencil and, you know, sharpened it really fine and maybe gotten in some detail that way. But I wanted to just use these charcoals and I wanted to really push myself out of my comfort zone. That's something I'm trying to do this year. Um and be a little bit more flexible with my artwork and not stress if it isn't necessarily going exactly the way I want it to go. Now there is a fine line between that and being lazy and not accurate in my drawing. So um, it's kind of a fine balance. So let's talk about the price of this charcoal. It's $10 for a box of assorted leads. Um, and that's not the cheapest charcoal out there. However, it does have a, I think, greater convenience factor. Because you can put it in a clutch pencil, you're getting the feel and the convenience of not touching the piece of charcoal like you would 
get in a um, charcoal pencil. The problem with a typical charcoal pencil is you have to do so much sharpening, you end up wasting quite a bit of the charcoal. So I think ultimately, even though this is more expensive than charcoal pencils, um, you end up with more product and less waste. I am not going to say it's any less messy, however, because look at my desk. There is charcoal everywhere. Um, that's just that's just the nature of the beast when you're working with charcoal. So I definitely had less on my fingers, which was good because it didn't spread onto my drawing from me touching it. But it was ultimately the same cleanup. I use a three foot by two foot silicone mat on my desk. Um, and I have it in the neutral gray color, which is what you see. I like the gray color because it... Um, doesn't distract from the artwork and being a neutral gray, it's a good mid-tone. So I can actually kind of use it to judge my lights and my darks based off of my, based off of my mat. Um, and it cleans super easily. I can just take a wet cloth and I wiped off the charcoal from the silicone mat. I've got an acrylic paint on it and it comes right off. I've gotten all sorts of art supplies on this mat and it's a fantastic addition to my art room. It's one of my favorite purchases. I had fun using the black and white charcoal on the yellow paper. I don't normally pick such vibrant colors as a background. And I think in this case, the choice really enhanced the fact that I was drawing lemons or what I think are lemons. And the way the yellow comes through the background kind of ties the whole piece together. Here is the piece finished. And here is where we're finally using the charcoal on uh, more traditional drawing paper. And I found that this is where it did its best job. Um, this is much more textured paper, so the charcoal um, doesn't wipe off as easily. You are seeing a box of Derwent charcoal blocks next to my sketchbook because I did take a little piece of that brand of charcoal and I tested it out in the upper corner of this paper. I wanted to make sure there weren't any glaring differences between the Credicolor charcoal and the Durant charcoal and I didn't notice anything. Charcoal is charcoal and between brands you're generally not going to notice too much of a difference. Um, it's just been so long since I've used charcoal. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't remembering anything incorrectly. And I wanted to make sure that I gave a fair review about these um, charcoal sticks. You can see here with this half of the background, I colored it in a little bit differently and I blended it out a little bit differently with a brush. And it gave me less of a smooth background than on the left side of the drawing. That's my fault for not remembering that I was doing this on a more textured paper. So it was going to grip the charcoal a little bit more than in the other two sketchbooks I had used previously. I need to get better at remembering to keep a piece of paper under my hand and under my wrist when I'm leaning against my sketchbook. Um, I have a tendency to drag my hand right through my drawing and it isn't always an issue like it isn't an issue necessarily with colored pencil, but it's definitely an issue with charcoal and graphite. Um, it actually, I shouldn't say it, it isn't an issue with colored pencil because the oils from your hand can affect the longevity of the paper. Um, it, it can cause the paper to break down years in the future. It's not something I'm concerned about in my sketchbook, but it's a habit I should be forming for when I'm doing larger pieces that I might sell. I should also talk about the importance of picking a good reference photo. Um, this giraffe, because I'm working on a small scale, it didn't end up being a big deal that the reference photo was kind of dark and not very detailed. Um, However, had I wanted to draw this giraffe on a larger scale, I would have been kind of out of luck because the, there's not enough detail in the reference photo 
to kind of see what to draw. Um, let me know if you would like to see a video of me picking a reference photo, like what I consider a good reference photo. Um, not every gorgeous photograph is going to make a nice piece of artwork. And there's a lot of things that go into the decision-making process when I'm picking a reference photo. And sometimes I think I've picked a good photo and when I actually go into drawing, I realize, ooh, this wasn't as clear of a photo as I thought. And that's what happened with this giraffe. It is much easier to eliminate extra detail than it is to invent detail that isn't there. And in this case, the center of the photo was very in focus and the sides of the photo started to become out of focus. So his eyes um, didn't have as much detail as I would have liked. And also there was a lot that was just in shadow. So I think the next giraffe I draw, I would like to find a photo where the eyes are very sharp and clear and crisp because I think that's um, probably the most important part in a photo of an animal. Out of the three drawings that I did, I think I struggled with the materials the least on this one, again, because that paper has a lot of tooth and I didn't need to worry about the charcoal just coming off the paper. I think those other two sketchbooks do better with graphite and colored pencil. So I think that's probably what I'll stick to. Um, I do wanna try gouache in the multicolored sketchbook. Even though those pages are really thin, I might be able to get away with it because the gouache doesn't need a ton of water. Um, maybe I'll gesso the pages first. I just really like the color of that paper and I think it would look really cool coming through the layers of paint. Let me know if that is something you'd like to see in one of my upcoming videos. Because these pages are white, instead of reaching for the white charcoal too much, I um, relied more on my eraser to lighten up parts that maybe I made overly dark or parts that I wanted to bring out more highlights. Both the kneadable eraser and the mono tombow erasers did a great job pulling up this uh, charcoal. Overall, these three drawings ended up taking me about two and a half hours. Um, it's hard to tell when it's sped up. That's why I like sharing that information with you. Charcoal is a very fast medium. If I had done this in graphite or colored pencil, it would have taken much longer. Colored pencil probably would have taken me days and days to do this. Once I finished the giraffe, I sprayed this drawing and I sprayed the lemon drawing. You can tell that a tiny bit of the charcoal does come off when I rub them, but it's nothing compared to what would be happening if um, they hadn't been treated with the fixative. And almost nothing's coming off on the tissue. So I feel very comfortable closing up these sketchbooks and not worrying about transfer onto other pages. Something to keep in mind when you're spraying the pages, do not panic when they buckle and when the white chalk seems to disappear. Once the uh, spray is completely dry, the page will no longer be buckled and the white seems to come back. So um, this is definitely a fantastic purchase. The nice thing about the bottle being so small is I can throw it right into my travel art kit. So between that and the clutch pencil holding onto the charcoal, I can travel with it and it's actually not a, a huge mess making deal that it would be without the clutch pencil and the spray. They both have made this a uh, more enjoyable process. If you stuck around this long, thank you so much. Let me know what you think of these quick sketches and let me know what you'd like to see in my next few videos. Thanks again for sticking around. See you soon. Bye.